<laughs> well, a painting, a lamp, even a sword, those are just a few of your hidden treasures. An antiques expert, Paul Brown, is here with us this morning to give us an idea of how much they're worth and, of course, always the interesting stories behind them. How That's you doing? I'm here. I'm great. How are you? Good to see you again. Well, it's good to be seen. All right. What do you got for us? Well, the first painting, uh, this, this gentleman, Carl Wilhelm, he was born in 1888 in Stuttgart, which is a city in Germany, most famous for that's where Porsche is from. It has nothing to do with this painting, but I figured I'd throw that in <laughs> okay. there. Anyway, so he was he was born to an artistic family. His mom and his dad and his brother all painted. And by the time he was, you know, a young guy, he had a brush in his hand. By the time he was a teenager, he was off to the Berlin Institute of the Arts, which is a prestigious place. It was prestigious then, it's prestigious now. He painted there for about two years, and then he got like that wanderlust that artists get. He took off, grand tour of Europe, went to Geneva and Brussels and Paris, finally settled in Luxembourg. And okay. this is a little village called Vienden. That's Vienden Castle up there. And he sat and painted in this village for 20 years. Mm -hmm. He was a tourist painter. He painted ver versions of this exact scene. You can still go there now, and they're probably still painting pictures of this exact scene. I've actually sold one of these paintings before. There's lots of them. He it, you know, he repeated himself over and over because that's what sold. Does that reduce the value? That well, it's, he was never known as a fine artist, right? So it was a, he was a tourist painter. I sold one just very similar to this for $800, and that's about the top. I did pretty good because mm -hmm. that's about the top end. It's about five to $800. Okay. Yeah. Not bad. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. All right. So and what, it still looks like that, by I, the way. And it's a beautiful painting. Right. <laughs> all right. What do we have next here? What do we have next here? What it comes? Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is the Art Nouveau Lady Lamp, and I picked this one just because it's kind of kitschy. Um, Art Nouveau was a period from about 1890, very short-lived, very popular, but it, it, it was done by about the 19 teens. Certainly by 1920, everybody wanted straight lines. But at the time, the uh, the female figure, floriform, this was all the rage for about 20 years. Um, and if this were an original piece from that time, from the 1890s to about 1915, it'd be worth many thousands of dollars. Um, it is not. This was a revival in the post-war 1940s and then revivaled again in the 1970s. This is probably from the 40s or early 50s. It didn't take off then very well, okay. so it, it came and went. It's probably worth two to $300, but it is kind of an important piece of sort of decorative arts history. Yeah, and like you, know, you said, anyway. it's kitschy. It I is kitschy. You know, I, you know there's, there's, there's a place in the world for kitschy, sure, isn't there? I absolutely. think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's why I'm here. Right? <laughs> I love it. Okay, so what's next here? What is it? Oh, this is best for last. This is the okay. um, this is the Civil War cavalry officer's sword. Um, you can tell it's a cavalry officer sword by the length of the blade. It's about a 35 inch blade. It's thin and light and it's designed to be ridden on top of horseback for charging into ground trips. Think of the Dothraki, like in Game of Thrones. They ride into, ran into swinging that thing <laughs> left and right, designed to crack collarbones and take heads off. Nice. That's the original iron scabbard. And you got to remember, the Civil War was sort of the beginning of the end for the sword as, a, as an effective weapon. There, um, you know, there, there were advancements in firearms right around then. And so for the preceding 2,000 years, we used swords. Or they use swords, and not so much after that, primarily decorative. Anyway, so now we got to figure out, is it a Confederate or a Union sword? And there's okay. a couple of different clues on that. Obviously, the Union had much more manufacturing capability, and they would make these in large batches. They, in the South, the Confederates did not. The North would have a stamp down there by the end of the, uh, the hilt and the handguard. Mm -hmm. This does not, but primarily, the best way to tell is that grip. Now, in the North, the, the uh, union, union, union swords were made with either leather or shark skin, right? And they, down here, they had textiles. So this is a finely woven canvas dipped in pitch or pine tar and then wrapped around with that little uh, brass braid. So that is definitely a Confederate uh, cavalry officer's sword. Now, you got to talk value. If you could attach it to, like if there was some family history or something, you could attach it to a particular battle, you might be able to bring the value up. Mm -hmm. But as it sits right there, it's two to $3,000 all day long. Wow, before, right, cool. before there is any story. But no, that's before the story. If you want to add a story, we can make it worth more. Oh, you can see how, oh, oh that's the other picture. Never mind. All right, oh. sorry. It's okay. <laughs> Shiny thing. There's lots of them. Ah! <laughs> That's why you're here, yeah, the right? kitsch, okay. right? Yeah, that's okay. right that's you actually I have. have an event coming up. I actually do. I've been yeah. working with a, a charity called Prostaware, which is a prostate cancer awareness charity. Our main and simple mission is to get guys to get their prostate checked, get their PSA checked. Uh, prostate cancer is the kind of thing, if you catch it early, mm -hmm. you can get rid of it. And if you catch it late, it, it can get rid of you. So there's right. no reason to not. The uh, You should get it tested earlier rather than later. I, I suggest 40, although I'm not a doctor. Okay. <laughs> 
But, but you're going to play one on TV. Right? Yeah, I'm going to play one on TV. For the, for the purposes of today, get your PSA check, people. Okay, and so the details on The detail, one? yeah, the event is uh, this Saturday. You can go to prostaware.org and you can buy tickets. It's open to the public. We're having a big uh, event. It's like a gala fundraiser. It'll be fun. We have a live auction, silent auction. A lot of fun. Come see us. Okay. Prostaware.org. Sounds good. And we'll keep asking for potentially your hidden treasures, and Paul can take a look at them and see what they're worth. So if you think you have a hidden treasure, email pictures and a description. It has a good story. It might be worth more. Well, right? exactly. <laughs> Depends on what it is. It's all about the story. Uh, yeah, and that, uh, email that to Good Day Atlanta at Fox. TV.com. There you go. You can also follow Paul Brown at Twitter at Auction King ATL. Always a pleasure, Paul. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Coming up next, we'll have our trending topics. Stay with us. Oh, God. You are my treasure.